What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So it turns out Nintendo is browsing eBay. At least that's what it appears to be happening. We're gonna go over some odd stuff on eBay and I guess what you should be looking out for if you decide to try to sell your Switch on eBay because you just might get it taken down by Nintendo. Yeah, we're gonna talk a bit about that. And also, Telltale appears to be back. Well, they're kind of back. It's not exactly as it appears and it's kind of a mess. We'll go over that and a bunch of other stuff as well. As always guys, enjoy these videos. Make sure you hit the like button. It does help out and get subscribed to stay up to date on all the gaming news that goes on. Do this every weekday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time. And we're actually gonna start today with the Lion King Aladdin bundle that we talked a bit about yesterday that was revealed at GameStop's convention where the biggest news out of that seemed to be that GameStop has a convention, but uh, we have actual information here that was released to the press through press releases and everything so we have box art to look at and a full trailer well what's happening here is it looks like we will have Aladdin and Lion King put together in kind of an HD remaster the Aladdin version which is something people were interested in which one would it be the Super Nintendo or the Genesis well it's actually the Game Boy well it's the Game Boy and the Genesis one which are Interesting picks, I guess, but sure, we'll go with that. And then the Lion King version will also be like the Super Nintendo one as well as the Genesis. So it looks pretty good there anyway. There's also going to be several kind of features and extras put in there behind the scenes stuff. And apparently there will be what they said, like an easy mode for Lion King. Lion King is a hard game specifically because of the way I guess it was designed and programmed. It's it's not the most accurate game when it comes to your jumps on platforms, I'll say that. But apparently they'll have some things thrown in there to make it a bit easier. And I have to say, looking at this, this looks like it's going to be pretty fun to pick up. $30, uh, they showed physical box arts for everything, so it should be physical everywhere, including the Switch. And it's coming out this fall. So yes, while I, I know there's some debate about Super Nintendo versus Genesis for Aladdin, uh, I'm actually really looking at Lion King because it's gonna be interesting to revisit now and to see a whole new generation of gamers try to beat it. Oh, and remember how I talked about Metal Gear Solid 4 being uh, kind of looked at with that PS3 emulator that was something they might try to tackle? Well, it looks like RCPS3, I, it, I, I get those letters mixed up all the time, looks like they've done it. Uh, BSOD Gaming posted the video of them playing Metal Gear Solid 4 at 4K, 60 frames per second, and it looks good. Good, it looks real good. The game back then already was visually looked great, but of course it's at a lower resolution compared to what we play now, and it's stuck on the PlayStation 3, which is my biggest gripe. I would love to see it moved up to current platforms or next generation platforms. That is a game that could get, I think, a remaster next generation if enough people wanted it, but this is really cool. Glad to see that's happening. You still need kind of a, a fairly strong PC, like BSO to Gaming is, is using a fairly strong PC to make it work, but the fact that it's running is awesome. Oh, and we had talked about that tease from Koei Tecmo where Gamatsu was kind of uh, speculating about a Warriors Orochi style announcement. It looks like that is the case. Warriors Orochi 4 Ultimate is releasing December 2019 in Japan, specifically for now, and then it appears that in February 2020, it'll follow up with a PC release. So we have a Switch PS4 release in Japan. So Switch being region free, just as an example, you can download it, I guess, in the eShop. Don't know about language options or everything, anything like that, but it'll release there, and then it will release February 2020 on PC. This looks like it's gonna have over 170 different characters, including a few new ones, and it didn't say anything specifically about an Xbox release, but whenever this does come west and it gets localized and everything here, you might see it then. The Xbox, of course, not very popular in Japan and most publishers and developers will kind of leave that behind if it's a Japanese only release for now. And while we're on the topic of specifically Japanese releases again for now, or we'll probably see it localized down the road, Samurai Showdown on the Switch, December 12th in Japan. It's gonna be 60 frames per second and it will also have single Joy-Con play for local multiplayer, which is interesting. I'm Curious to see how all that works, but I, I guess it does. 60 frames, of course, is needed. We've seen Dragon Ball Fighters do that as well. Uh, and we'll see when it eventually shows up uh, outside of Japan. But of course, the Switch being region free means that you can download it December 12th yourself and pick it up. You, there's not a lot of reading, I assume, in Samurai Showdown uh, to get the idea of the game and play it since it's a fighting game. So I guess you could look forward to it then as well. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's talk about Nintendo 
versus eBay sellers, it seems anyway. Now, this is a story that uh, was told by a user on Reset Era, specifically about how they had posted on eBay that they had a Nintendo Switch launch model specifically, maybe selling it to get ready for the new one with the enhanced battery, or maybe they want to switch light, and they're going to sell it, and they, they mention in the description, hey, it, you can modify it because it's the day one edition, right? It, at a certain point, we had the Switch kind of change internally a bit, and it wasn't able to be hacked or modified and everything, and that's why the older Switches are kind of sought after now because you can do that. So it makes sense that if you're trying to sell your Switch, you might want to let them know, hey, yeah, it, it, it can be modified because it's an old one. Well, seems Nintendo might not like that as their listing was pulled down and it seems to be about Nintendo IP infringement. And the only thing that I guess they can figure is that they typed out the word modify or able to be modified or able to be hacked in their description, which is something if you go to sell your Switch, which a lot of people probably will on eBay, right? As the new model, of course, is in full swing in your area and you wanna pick that one up, you wanna get the most you can for your Switch, your current one, you might take to eBay, right, to sell it. So apparently don't put, first of all, don't put modified or hacked or ability to be Either of those don't do that because apparently Nintendo is scouring eBay, which seems like they could probably take that time and use it towards doing something for the online. But hey, maybe they got a plan in September with they supposed Nintendo Direct with Super Nintendo games and more features. I'll, I'll at least wait till that Direct supposedly happens. But don't do that apparently on eBay. But what's really weird about this, I decided, hey, what happens if I just search for a hacked Switch on eBay and I was able to find one like that? Uh, I'm not gonna show the username or anything, obviously, but uh, here's a Switch that's just, it's just hacked, just modified. They even go on to tell you how to do it. They link to instructions, like, you know, you gotta put the little pin in on the side and everything. That's included, by the way. And they also have several games that come with it, it seems. So I'm not really sure why that one's up, but the other one is pulled down. One wasn't hacked at all or done work done to it. The other one is completely in there selling games. But here's the thing. The person who is, I guess, selling that, I want to be careful because if, if a random user in Seattle buys it from you, might not be a random user. We saw Sony do that with a PlayStation 4 where a person was, of course, selling a hacked PlayStation 4 with games on it so that they could catch them red-handed. Remember the person even sent them a piece of paper with instructions on it and Sony used all of that to, to sue them? Yeah, maybe I'll watch out for that, but it's an odd thing on eBay right now. My assumption is that Nintendo has some sort of bot set up to detect certain words, but then I don't really know why that one was not detected. You can find them fairly easily on there. I guess if you want one, you can do that too. Search for, I guess use first generation Switch. That's what, that's what I would use. But yeah, Nintendo seems to be scouring eBay, maybe even Amazon for these keywords and pulling them down. Next up, let's talk about one of my favorite games. It, it's, it's like on everything at this point, I think. It sold extremely well on the Switch, which is awesome to see. And that is Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is fantastic. If you've never played it, you gotta go get it right now. It's a callback to old school platformer, still has that same look, uh, and it's just a, a great, great game to play through. And a lot of people have been waiting for the expansion that they were talking about, and now, seems like even a new game, a spinoff, this is really cool to see. First of all, let's talk about the expansion that's coming up, part of their treasure trove, King of Cards, and they're also gonna have a multiplayer fighting game called Showdown. Now, both of these are coming out in December. It's part of the Shovel Knight treasure trove package, and it's gonna have several new features, which include new body types. There's a an option for accessibility. There's co-op feats, and there's gonna be support for three new languages and additional cheats that apparently makes it different when you play through it. I'll have to check all of that out. King of Cards looked pretty cool and I've been waiting for more information about it. All of this came way of a live stream that they had yesterday that was pretty long, but they also had one other little piece of information in there, which was Shovel Knight Dig. And I saw this and I said, what is this? It's just another game. Like they, they have a whole nother game. That, that They said it's been in development for about a year, but they don't have any type of release date for it, and they're working with a company that I'd really never heard of before, and I couldn't really find a ton of games that they've done before either. Now it's being done in collaboration with Nitrum, and apparently this game, Shovel Knight Dig, 
is about Shovel Knight pursuing Drill Knight and his dastardly crew to the center of the earth. It kind of reminds me a bit of SteamWorld Dig when I was looking at it as they were just literally digging down through the earth. But uh, I like the look of it. I'm gonna be curious, I guess, more information about it. However, King Cards took a little while to come out and they said this has been in development for about a year, which makes me think we might not see this until like late next year possibly even the year after. I'm kind of hoping that since they're doing this in collaboration with another developer, that it takes uh, less time. So hopefully this one is out and ready to go uh, by next year. Otherwise though, we have King of Cards coming up and a new fighting game mode being added to the current Shovel Knight showdown. So exciting stuff for Shovel Knight fans. Next up, let's talk about Telltale. Telltale is kind of back. Here's the thing. Their assets, name, everything was purchased by another company, LCG Entertainment and they look to be reviving them somewhat. And it's it's kind of a, a weird, sticky situation, mostly because of the number of IPs that Telltale had worked on in the past. If you remember, Skybound Games picked up The Walking Dead, so that's not with Telltale anymore. Apparently they still have access to things like The Wolf Among Us and Batman, so they seem to want to take those and maybe re-release them going forward because even things like Stranger Things has now reverted back to Netflix after the whole situation with Telltale, which was uh, pretty bad overall, I would say. They're also offering freelance positions to some of the older employees. However, they honestly might just want to find more stable work anywhere else, I would say, than that. And they're gonna take a shot, I guess, at keeping some of these IPs and franchises alive going forward because according to them, well, they actually believe in the adventure genre. And yeah, I think there is a crowd for it. I just think they got kind of burned out. I mean, honestly, you look at Telltale games and they all look and play the same, just of course, with different plots and some different characters thrown in there, depending on the IP that they are going with and using. I just think they could have maybe changed it up a bit. I, I mean, there's probably something they could have thrown into the adventure style genre. It just seemed like they were really interested in getting the next game out as fast as possible rather than try to innovate and come up with some new ideas with those IPs in the adventure genre. They really never seemed to push it forward. They just kind of skated along. At least it, it felt that way. I don't know if they're gonna do a ton of stuff with it right this second, and we're still not really sure about things like their Minecraft licensing, where they, you know, they do the Minecraft story mode, I believe, and stuff, and uh, and anything else around those other IPs. So we'll see what happens. This is still pretty early news, and we don't even know what their strategy is going forward. They might just start re-releasing everything going to next generation. And that's their strategy to initially get in capital and then maybe work on some of the other stuff. And our last bit of news is talk about the PlayStation Plus games for September. And you know what? They have some pretty good ones here, I would say. The two games that you have access to if you're a PlayStation Plus member for next month is Darksiders 3 and Batman Arkham Knight. Two good games. I mean, Darksiders 3 was, I thought pretty good when it first came out. It had some weird issues, and yes, I know it technically played like a Dark Souls game, but they did update it to play more like a Darksiders game. So if you skipped it or you just completely missed it at the time, I would check that one out. At least give it a download and try it out. I like Darksiders, and Darksiders 3 after the update became, I think, just an overall better game. And then, of course, Batman Arkham Knight, I think is a great game as well. It really is. It looks amazing. It had some performance issues on PC when it first came out, but for the most part on consoles, it was relatively fine. It had several patches and everything. I don't think they ever did anything with like PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X that I know of, but uh, still worth a pickup download with PlayStation Plus. Why not? It's there. They at least have a good lineup. They've had some sketchy ones, I would say at best over the past few months. This is a good month to have PlayStation Plus though. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day. This one is from a name that I'm gonna, going to attempt, but I'll apologize in advance if I don't get it right. Prezi uh, Me Slaw Oh, quits. Yeah, I got that one right. Uh, looking at PS Vita next to Nintendo Switch makes me think about Lost Opportunity by Sony why they give up after PSP? Well, to be honest, the Vita, I don't think got off to the kind of start that they wanted initially. And I think they spread themselves too thin. And instead of leaning into the Vita and keeping it going, they realized that the PlayStation 4 is where their bread and butter was. I mean, it still is. That's That was what they decided to take their studios and focus towards. And you know what? It worked out for them. You know, 100 million PlayStation units for a PS4 and everything. Seems like they probably went the right way, but I do wish there was another handheld 
because we used to have, at any given time, right, you know, two different ones with the, the PlayStation, uh, PSP, the Vita, or even like the Game Gear and the Game Boy. It's kind of a shame to see really no handheld left. I mean, technically you have the Switch Lite, right? I guess that's the one handheld because even the Switch is considered a hybrid. We used to have the Vita and the Vita was, I think, still a good system. It's just Sony just didn't give it, I think, enough time. And I don't even think enough resources after like the first two years, they pretty much gave up on it. I don't think they'll ever go back to it. I think they'll always stick with home consoles because they don't really want to compete with cell phones. They'd rather just make games for a cell phone. You technically already have a built-in handheld you know, that you walk around with and they would rather just make games for that rather than go through the whole process of doing R&D for their own system. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for News Wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's Nintendo and eBay sellers. Do you think they should be sitting there scouring eBay looking for people who are listing that their Switch can be modified when they sell it? and taking them down, you think they just leave it alone? Let me know about that one down below, especially if you're thinking about selling on eBay. Now you're like, well, I guess I shouldn't put that <laughs> down in the, in the description. What do you think about Telltale coming back? Uh, you think they're even gonna be around much, or you think this is just them testing the waters and see if they can just re-release some remasters and then maybe build up to something bigger? Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.